the forecast for May of 2017. I'll be talking about the different planetary configurations and the lunation cycles and different things that we can expect to be affecting us in May of 2017. If you want to get a detailed forecast every day, at my member site I do a forecast every day based on the five-fold division of time in Vedic astrology and also the current um, aspects and all of those things. Um, I have a lot of members. You can try it for only 50 cents for two weeks. So first, May 2nd through the 3rd, the moon will be in Cancer. Um, of course, the moon rules Cancer, so it's a time where we can really connect with the heart, sink into the truth and power that lies within our heart. Usually we ride up and down on the waves of emotion and you know the heart interacting with the surface of life and people. So when the moon is in Cancer, there can be a lot of emotions. But that's just a lot of emotional potential to also kind of go deep. So it's like you're on the ocean and you can either stay on the surface or you can go deep into the heart. Um, so for May uh, 2nd and 3rd, there's a great opportunity to go deeper. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. And then on May 3rd, the um, Mercury stops going retrograde. So it kind of stations and then it's going to go direct, but it stops going retrograde. It's been uh, retrograde in Aries, um, and so we've had a lot of kind of reversing of our um, thoughts and ideas and the story in our head. Um, we may have been sort of stuck or confused about some ways we were seeing things and interpreting things and kind of frustrated about it. So if you've let your frustrations get the best of you, especially as it relates to other people and certain types of communication or even like with technology kind of messing up. Um, Mercury will be stationary direct on the third and then he starts to move forward again so um, we can start to see that untangle a little you know um, a little bit and your um, you know recent miscommunications and things will start to um, unravel. Then on May 6th through the 8th, the moon goes into Virgo, <clears throat> where it's going to be joined retrograde Jupiter. So first of all, look up in the sky on those days. It should look really nice. Um, Jupiter is very bright, and with the moon so close, um, it'll feel, you know, you'll really feel that connection to teachers and guru and higher wisdom in your heart. Um, and since it's Virgo, you may actually take some practical steps um, on May 6th through the 8th to really bring those teachings into your life rather than just have them be kind of oh yeah I believe in this and then we don't ever do anything different so Jupiter and Virgo is good and app you know you know good for application so we should really feel those things today on May 6th through the 8th then May the 10th we have the full moon which will be in Libra of course this full moon will be opposite the Sun in Aries that exalted Sun so it's a time when that inspired, powerful self of the sun is now getting the reflection back from the moon. Now, of course, the sun is in Aries where it's really strong, and we may be even self-centered and whatnot. So the reflection back from Libra is really important now. And so um, you need to make sure to pay attention to others in order to accomplish your goals. Nothing worthwhile in life is worth it if we're just by ourselves and we have no one to share it with. So these will be big themes around May 10th as we get near that full moon. And it happens in the nakshatra of Vishukha, which is called the Star of Purpose. And the gods Indra and Agni are prevalent here, and they're about purification, connecting to higher, virtuous, righteous principles and themes, and to larger social causes. So you may feel a real, you know, sort of call to action now as well as a way to take that individuality of Aries into something more social, into something that's more about yourself, or I'm sorry, more about the world and larger themes and purposes, not just about yourself. Then, from May 14th until the 20th, we have this um, sort of chain of um, energy where the Moon is going to either be joined Saturn in Sagittarius, or it's going to be hemmed between Saturn and Ketu, because Ketu is in Aquarius, so the Moon has Saturn on one side, Ketu on the other when it's in Capricorn, or it's going to be joined Ketu. So this hemming and joining and stress of 
Moon, K2, I'm sorry, um, you know, Moon, Saturn, K2 will be happening for about six days. Um, and we've been feeling that actually since around January of this year. So there's this feeling of constriction and inhibition and also focus and scrutiny um, where we're really, you know, where we can be hypercritical of things, hypercritical of people, especially of our, in fact, even of our connections with other people, which is the moon, and trying to find that stillness and peace within ourselves, within our own heart, and as a, as a result, feeling kind of isolated, which is Saturn, or feeling kind of, you know, critical and harsh, which is Ketu. So May 14th through the 20th, that six days, notice that feeling of heaviness, restriction, wanting maybe to be alone, but also feeling kind of even sort of like a victim or something like that and try to see beyond that. Instead, go into deeper solitude and introspection, meditation, and deeper, you know, self-awareness and responsibility. So May 17th through the 19th, Venus in Pisces aspects retrograde Jupiter. So they're going to move into like an exact aspect 17th through the 19th. So this really brings that creativity and inspiration of Venus in Pisces um, and that elevated quality of Venus in Pisces and, you know, brings it into aspect with the Jupiter in Virgo, um, which is opposite. So when you see this opposition, it can bring a lot of, um, you know, sort of stress around, in fact, even around romantic and spiritual themes, but it can also bring a lot of congruence and alignment around higher teachings because of course Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces. Pisces is about higher teachings and Venus there in, in the highest sense shows where we want to find the you know where we're looking for the highest beauty in things that inspire us so that is a great time May 17th through the 19th to really reconnect with the promise of this exalted Venus which is you know to find joy and love and beauty in all things rather than feeling the disappointment of other people and all of those problems that we can get with too much Venus energy because sometimes Venus feels disappointing in the world because other people can disappoint us and Jupiter as well so we can bring them together towards something higher or you might find that thing I just said there might be a lot of disappointment that you're facing now and rather than just escape from it or turn it into some big story, feel the, you know, feel the love and beauty in your heart and the appreciation for that person and that situation and for, you know, ultimately for God and for life itself. May 17th through the 19th really, you know, really try to work on that. The May 22nd and 23rd, the moon actually joins that whole opposition. Um, so now we bring the moon into this and so when the moon joins this Venus Jupiter, it's even more connected to our heart. So rather than it just being about Venus and Jupiter, which are more otherworldly or they're more, um, you know, activating forces to kind of do something, the moon goes into Pisces and joins Venus and it comes into our heart. So we really feel this promise. So May 22nd and 23rd could be quite auspicious for, you know, really feeling that devotion and higher beauty and love now. Um, and it's also great for creativity and work if you're a teacher or anything like that. It's good to do things around that time because there's a lot of um, higher spiritual wisdom flowing. The May 25th, the new moon happens in Taurus, which begins a 30-day cycle of the Taurus themes. So this will be a month of enjoying life, finding beauty and comfort, sharing it with your loved ones. So the deeper lesson to Taurus underneath it all is contentment, to be content with what you have and you know it's easy for us as exemplified by Taurus to get bogged down in like material comfort, material possessions and not enjoy and have gratitude for what we have. So joy, gratitude, contentment are important for the next 30 days. Um, and also, you know, growing some of that comfort and joy and beauty and sharing it with others. And ultimately something that is less about your individual, you know, comfort zone and people around you and more about the world. Because Taurus ultimately is a great, you know, um, 
karma yogi and and servant, you know, wanting to be of service to God because of that Venus energy and that very devoted mentality. Um, and this new moon has joined Mars, which brings uh, some intensity. Um, it can be it can bring some power struggles with others, um, but it's in Rohini Nakshatra, which is related to growth and creativity of all sorts. You also want to be careful of things like jealousy, because Rohini has a quality of jealousy to it, and Moon Mars also has some jealousy themes that might arise. So you want to be aware of that. Then on May 31st, Venus is going to leave Pisces, this last day of the month. Venus has been in Pisces since the end of January, so we've gotten kind of used to Venus being in Pisces. And it goes into Aries, so you may notice a drastic shift in your desire and willingness to compromise with others now, especially since January. So if you're you know, trying to please other people and do all that stuff, that's not going to feel like it's, you know, you're not going to be digging it so much um, after May 31st. And what you want to be careful of is snapping back really hard and saying, okay, now I'm tired of it and blowing up. All right? After, you know, in June. June could be tough on relationships in that way because Mars, I'm sorry, because Venus is going into Aries after having been in Pisces for four months. So we've been kind of wanting to compromise and, and not fight. We might be feeling much more fired up a little bit um, after May 31st when Venus goes into Aries.